This week we're covering the X95, which is the recent iteration to the Tavor rifle from IWI. Let's get started. All right, guys, we have a lot to cover on this little guy today. We're gonna to get down with the nitty gritty specs today. And then on the range, we're gonna cover the design application and why the Israeli forces use this. One of the most obvious things you're gonna notice here is just how short this sucker is. Comes in at a overall length of 26 and 1 8 inch. It weighs 7.9 pounds and the barrel length is 16 and a half inches. Uh, the twist is one and seven and it is cold hammer forged and chrome lined. So you're not gonna have any corrosion issues there. And the stock is a uh, polymer reinforced plastic. And one of my favorite features is it is a gas piston operated. So I'm not gonna have to clean it as often as my AR-15 guns, uh, cause I hate cleaning. So that's awesome. And it should probably run more reliable as time goes on. All right, now that all that's out of the way, let's cover some of the neat features built into this rifle. Uh, one of the first things I took note of was the backup iron sights built directly into the Picatinny rail. Uh, has the rear one, and the front one even has a trinium vial built in, which was pretty neat addition. This rifle was designed from the ground up to be ambidextrous, and <laughs> that means that you can flip-flop a lot of the controls from the left or the right, but some already come standard on both sides. Um, the magazine release is on both sides already, and you can manipulate the, the uh, bolt stop from either side. You can flip the safety from left to right, and it has QD sling mounts on both sides as well. They developed this rifle from the ground up to fit lefties and righties. The front panels are easily removable, and underneath them are Picatinny rails, so at each position you can attach a light, a laser, or a bipod. For those of you familiar with the original Tavor rifle, the X95 has some new features uh, that you're going to like. I'm just going to go right down the list and we're going to hit each one of them. First one, the fire control pack uh, is now, it breaks much cleaner. There's not, there's not a lot of slack or take up in the trigger and it breaks cleanly at five to six pounds. Next up on the list is they repositioned the ambidextrous magazine release to the trigger guard area. It was in the, in the back and it was hard to manipulate and do a fast mag change, so that's nice. IWI also relocated the charging handle to a more centralized location on the receiver to keep a better center of mass when manipulating it. They also changed out the grip where you can modify it to have a single guard, more traditional what we're used to, so this is all swappable, and a smaller smaller and a smaller bolt release button so that's a pretty big list of upgrades from the original Tavor rifle and I like what they did here all right guys we dove into this so quick we forgot to show you what this thing comes with and it is worth mention comes with a very awesome cleaning kit uh, the, everything you need um, two QD sling mounts and the tool needed to change the barrel out with the conversion kits and one of the most comprehensive manuals I've ever seen come with a firearm. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move all the stuff out of the way so we can go ahead and show you the disassembly process. All right, once you ensure the firearm is unloaded, use the tip of a bullet and push out the rear takedown pin. The buttstock is on a hinge and it will fold out of the way, allowing you to remove the bolt carrier and piston assembly. You can set that aside for cleaning later. Next, rotate the firearm on its side, use the same bullet and push out the two fire control pack takedown pins. One thing to note here, make sure you pull them all the way out so when you pull on the control pack, it will clear those two pins. Uh, next, rotate the bolt catch up, reach inside, and you can grab the molded plastic on the trigger pack assembly and it comes right out. Uh, this is gonna stay pretty clean. There's not much to do here. Um, now that's all the parts laid out here, guys. I mean, that's basically as far as you need to take it down for cleaning. Um, you could take the bolt down more, but really it's a piston driven knock off the carbon and lube it back up and you're gonna be ready to go. Now, should you guys wish to really get in there and clean everything and take it down even further, um, you, can, you can take it down further, just refer to the owner's manual and it does cover other aspects of the gun that we're just not gonna to cover today. So you got a chamber brush, pretty self-explanatory. You got a giant toilet brush to clean all the uh, residue out of the plastic area. And if you really wanna get down to it, it comes with a archeological <laughs> digging brush 
So you really get all those specks of dust off your gun. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, they did a great job with the cleaning kit here and the manual, so bravo to IWI for that. All right, guys, we made it out to the range. It's a nice, cool 90 degrees out here in Leesburg, Florida. Uh, we're at Aries Training Facility. Um, today, we're going to be shooting at the Rubber Dummies targets, and our sponsors from Shoot Steel, they both did an excellent job at the shoot. Many of you that came out to the shoot, they had a plethora of targets to show up and blow up. Um, these we even torched with the flamethrowers. So go give them a follow and a look. Excellent products. Uh, so we're going to use them today. Um, we're going to do something a little different today as far as the review. Uh, we discussed possibly shooting groups, but when I did some research on this popular rifle right now, there is a ton of high quality YouTube videos out there from Tim at Military Arms Channel, um, Eric and Chad at IV8888. Go check out their channels. They did good comprehensive reviews. They showed gr uh, groupings. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Our focus today is application. IWI developed this for the IDF for a specific uh, set of requirements. Um, they were looking to replace the uh, tried and true and in long use M4A1 carbine. Um, hold on, glasses are fogging up here. And <clears throat> they wanted it to have more reliability in the sand, uh, different environments. They wanted it shorter specifically for mechanized uh, troop use, getting in and out of an armored vehicle, um, as well as clearing a building. Iraq and Afghanistan, stuff like that. I mean, those are all close quarters situations. They couldn't have a longer barrel. And in doing so, they wanted to also maintain a longer barrel for higher velocities. So today we're going to have some fun while showing you the practical application of the DeVore X95. All right, the first rifle we're going to compare right now is a full-length 16-inch uh, AR-15. We got the stocks fully extended, so the grips are all at the same length from the butt to the grip. As you see here, when I when I clear the building, I mean, it's a nimble, lightweight gun, but due to the length, I have to stick out pretty far from the edge of that corner of that building. When we go down to the 10 and a half inch, one thing you immediately note is it's still longer than the X95. Again, grip to stock length is the same. A little shorter than the 16 inch, okay? Well, then this is where things get real interesting. 16 inch barrel, okay? Bull pup, look how tight I can get to this corner of the building with well, a full length barrel. It's six inches longer than this one. So, something to take note of. The Tefor also makes it easy to get down into a kneeling position without the muzzle touching the ground. Okay, I'm gonna switch rifles here. This is a full size 16 inch. Put it all the way in my shoulder with the stock collapsed. So, it does that well. All right, let's, uh, let's go shoot from a vehicle. That sounds fun. All right, guys, we're just driving through the jungle in this heap of crap car. We figured we'll shoot from it. Uh, we're going to be shooting the Gorilla Ammunition 69 grain today. If you want to save, your, uh, if you want to save on buying that ammo, use coupon code NFA Review. And uh, all right, we're going to shoot a 16-inch and a Tavor and see which one's easier to shoot from a vehicle. Much easier to swing around, engage the safety, and uh, yeah, that was fun. All right, now we're gonna try uh, standing and shooting groups for 100. As if to make things more challenging, I just ran all the way back from 100 yards. So uh, we're also gonna change some mags out in between to see which ones drop free. Got P mag on here, 69 green, gorilla. Sweet, five out of five, and I'm out of breath. A little bit pull there. Try the Lancer mags. Clear. All right. 
USGI mag. Haven't missed yet. A little P mag here. Yeah, baby. And a drop free. Nice. Final thoughts, IWI hit it out of the park with this rifle. Um, between the available conversion kits and 9mm and 300 blackout, um, you have a 16 inch rifle that's capable of clearing corners, shooting from a vehicle, kneeling, standing and shooting at 100 yards with decent accuracy. It's perfect for uh, combat. Ships in what? Black, flat dark earth, OD green. A lot of options there. One of the biggest things about it and what I do is it's a non NFA item and it's shorter than my Mark 18 with the stock all the way extended. So no nine month wait and you can, and you're ready to rock and roll as soon as you buy it. So uh, speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and destroy these rubber dummies here. And this time I'm gonna do a little better job of manipulating the bolt release. Let's get to it. Yeah, baby. Thanks for watching. See you next time.